Okay, we are live. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Honor to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. My utmost respect to the perfectly enlightened Samma Sambuddha, the noble doctrine of the Buddha, and the noble Mahasangha, the disciples of the Buddha. Hello everyone. Welcome to our um, Dhamma session today. Today we gather to reflect on the wisdom contained in the Chitta Vagga of Dhammapada. And we have already discussed um, two more chapters. And today, uh, the chapter on the mind. Um, this chapter offers profound insights into the nature of the mind and emphasizes the critical importance of mental discipline in our spiritual journey. The Buddha's teachings in these verses guide us towards mastering our mind, which is essential for achieving true happiness and liberation from suffering. The mind is like a powerful but untamed force. It can lead us towards suffering if left uncontrolled, or it can be a source of profound peace and wisdom when disciplined. Let's explore each verse in detail to understand how we can cultivate a mind that brings us closer to enlightenment. Um, we, we remember, if you um, remember, we started with Dhammapada uh, about the mind, Mano Bhubbangama Dhamma. Mind is the forerunner of all uh, evil states and good states. And over here, the, the entire chapter is dedicated to mind. So let me uh, get started with the uh, chanting first. Pandanang chapalang chittang durakhang dunivaryang ujung karoti medhavi usukaro tejanang varijo thale kitto okamokata ubhato paripanda tidang chittang Maradheyang pahatave Dunnigahas lahuno Yatha kama nipatino Chittas damato sadhu Chittang damtang sukhavahang Sududda sang sunipunang Yatha kama nipatinam chittam rakhetha medhavi chittam guttam sukhavaham durangamang ekacharam asariram guhasayam ye chittam sanyame sangti Mokhang te mar bandhana Anavatita chittas Sadhang mang avijanato Pariplava pasadas Panyana paripurati Anavasuta chittas Ananvahata chetaso Punya pap pahinas natijagarato bhayang Kumbho pamankaya mimang viditua 
नगरूपमितोदेथमारंगयुदेन जितेसनुसिया अचिवत कायो पठवीसती क्षुदेत विज्ञानो निरंगलिंग दिशो दिशंगैरा वेरी वापन वेरिण मिच्छा पनीत चित पापियो नो खरे माता पिता कैरा अन्ये वापिचातकापनीत चित सो नो खरे सो दिस आर द फारिश टेन्सा Uh, that we have in the chitta vagga so let us go to detail explanation of these verses so a phandanam chapalam chittam durakkham dunnivaryam ujung karoti medhavi usukaro vatejana just as a fletcher straightens an arrow shaft even even so the discerning man straightens his mind so fickle and unsteady so difficult to guard this is a really really important um stanza i think it can be a very uh, very motivating uh, stanza to all those people who practice dhamma a fletcher a craftsman who makes arrows meticulously straightens each arrow shaft to ensure it flies true to its target similarly uh, we must straighten our minds which are naturally fickle and unsteady this process requires discernment patience and continuous effort just as a well crafted arrow is essential for a successful hunt a well trained mind is crucial for a meaningful and virtuous life by practicing mindfulness and self reflection we can guide our minds towards wisdom and compassion steering clear of distractions and delusions i really like um, the way um, the buddha has used so many so many similes and metaphors throughout Uh, the the tipitaka and particularly in dhampada you can actually do a separate research on those powerful similes uh, and metaphors in the dhampada alone so here again how um, powerful it can be uh, when you um, when you as a wise person when you straighten your mind um, you can really Uh, make lot of things you can benefit um, a lot and you can ensure uh, your true target um, that is the the idea of this so the mind can be so fickle and unsteady so difficult to uh, guard but then again as a wise person just like a fletcher um, you have to uh, guard uh, guard your mind and that way you can uh, make the most of your mind power mind power is uh, much more stronger than anything in the world so uh, we can use uh, so much benefit we can make the most out of it uh, if we straighten it uh, the other stanza varijo thale khitto okamokata ubhato परिफंदतितं चित्तं मारधियं पहातवे uh, as a fish when pulled out of water and cast on land 
thoughts and quivers even so is this mind agitated hence should one abandon the realm of mara mara dhaya here means realm of mara so uh, the mind is just like the flower the fish again you can easily recognize the the nature of the mind when you look at this a uh, beautiful simile just as a fish pulled out of water and cast on land you must have seen many, on many occasions how they how they throbs how they quivers how they panic and how they wrestle um so uh, restless and so panicked um when it comes to the water um, out of the water uh the mind is just like that so um uh, the uh, one should abandon the realm of mara uh, the mind because of the the agitated mind a fish out of water thrashes about in distress unable to survive in an environment that is not natural for it similarly our mind uh, become agitated and restless when they are not in their natural state of calm and awareness so that is the idea the mind needs calm and mind needs to be aware mindfulness uh, can be the place where the mind can uh, be much more calm uh so this verse urges us to recognize this agitation and strive to transcend the realm of mara the embodiment of temptation and delusion in buddhism uh, do you remember like in the uh dasa sangyojanas the the ten fetters uh, the uddhacha or the restlessness is placed just next to the uh avijja only by an arhant you can actually uh, get rid of the uddhacha or the uh, the restlessness such a powerful thing this agitation is so um, we really need a lot of powerful uh, mindfulness a very strong um, set of mindfulness to make sure that the mind stays calm and peaceful so by practicing meditation and mindfulness we can create a mental in- environment that supports peace and clarity reducing the turmoil that distracts us from the path of dhamma okay so let's go to the the other stanza now dunnigahas lahuno yath kam nipatino chittas damato sadhu chittam dantam sukhavaham wonderful indeed it is to subdue the mind so difficult to subdue ever swift and ceasing whatever it desires a tamed mind uh, brings happiness um so we also have seen mind is compared to a wild buffalo so when the wild buffalo um is there out there if you try to tame it you can imagine the kind of restlessness kind of a uh, stubbornness kind of um a uh, violence that it could display so it's not so easy at the beginning you need to be very smart very skillful very careful in taming the mind once you tame the mind um you can bring so much happiness you can make wonders when you have um a tame mind the mind is incredibly swift and prone to chase after desires <clears throat> subduing such a mind is indeed a remarkable achievement the verse highlights the joy and peace that come from taming the mind the control mind does not react impulsively to every desire or aversion but remains calm and centered this stability leads to a deeper enduring happiness that is not dependent on external circumstances through consistent practice 
and self-discipline, we can train our minds to respond wisely rather than react impulsively. That's a beautiful uh, background story. I'll um, explain the story in short. There was a, a devout woman receiving instruction from the monks. So the monks were practicing and this woman also wanted to practice with them. And then the woman was so uh, hardworking, uh, so mindful and um, really very, um, very powerful practitioner. And she was able to attain anagami, the third stage of sainthood. And then also she achieved some supernatural powers, such as reading others' thoughts. And <clears throat> so even before the monks had gained their um, arahantahood, uh, their liberation, their deliverance, uh, this devout woman, this devoted uh, lady was able to attain anagami, the non-returner stage, along with the supernatural powers. And then um, she, she understood the physical needs of the monks, like the food, maybe arms food, not enough, maybe medicine, what, what things are necessary for the monks to practice better. She administered to them all according to their needs uh, in order to practice them, uh, practice better. So before long, these monks also were able to attain Avanchi. And um, there was an avaricious monk, a greedy monk, hearing of her powers. Oh, there is a woman like that. I should go to her. I can also be you know, treated well by her because she, she can read my mind what I need and she hopefully treats me well. So the monks, uh, the monk thought and she, he visited uh, that monastery. So as she was helping the other monks, she was also uh, doing everything as this monk desired. The monk thought, oh, whatever I desire, she brings to me. This is this is amazing. And the monk was a little <clears throat> shocked and also scared, fearing, <clears throat> fearing that evil thoughts might arise in him. And if he has some evil thoughts, what will happen? Like she could, she could actually read them. So he was uh, not so confident then. And he decided to go to the Buddha and reported the matter the Blessed One, I had this experience, actually I was having uh, a bad thought. I mean, I had a, a selfish thought by um, going to that place uh, so that I could be treated well by that lady. But then I decided uh, not to be there because uh, if I get some bad thoughts, she might be able to read them as well. So the Buddha admonished the monk uh, to subdue his uncontrollable mind. On the basis of this story, uh, the Buddha uh, recited this, uh, this stanza. Wonderful indeed it is to subdue the mind, so difficult to subdue, ever swift, and ceasing whatever it desires. A tamed mind brings happiness. Okay, Chittavagya number four. Sududdasang sunipunang yatha kama nipatinang chittang rakhetha medhavi chittang guttam sukhavaham. Let the discerning man guard the mind, so difficult to detect and extremely subtle, seizing whatever it desires. A guarded mind brings happiness. Again, the mind is subtle and often difficult to observe. You can't really touch that. It is untouchable. It is um, unseen. You can't even see me. So uh, it's not visible to us. And it can latch onto desires quickly and subtly, often without our conscious awareness. Sometimes we can have some desires even in our dream while walking, while talking, when we are awake, we can also have desires 
um, every time you don't know how it can happen to us. Like desires can be even very subtle. Sometimes um, I remember there is a book by uh, Bhante um, Rerukhani Chandavimala. Um, it is called uh, One Chaka Dhamma. Like how these dhammas, some of those things are cheating us and we don't even know that they are there within us. So we have to be extremely careful because the, the mind is so subtle and it can the ignorance can really um, cheat us in so many different, different ways. So the discerning individual, the wise individual, and the one who understands things, recognizes this and diligently guards their mind. So one has to be really careful, really mindful, really diligent in order to guard the mind. Mind is not like any other thing. You need to be extremely careful in dealing with this fragile and um, subtle and also um, untouchable mind, um, physically untouchable. By cultivating awareness and vigilance, we can prevent the mind from being led astray by fleeting desires. So the fly, uh, desires can keep coming, keep floating. And the, the one who is aware, one who is vigilant, can guard the mind against them. This guardness, this guardedness leads to inner peace and contentment. As we learn to focus our attention on what truly matters and align our, our actions with our highest uh, values. So again, this uh, uh, Dhammapada stanza, uh, Chittavagga number four, it's a really, really helpful um, advice to all of us. A guarded mind brings happiness. Then there is another uh, one, uh, number five. Durangamang eka charang asari rang guha sayang ye chittang sanyame santi mukhanti mara bandhana. Dwelling in the cave of the heart, the mind without form wanders far and alone. Those who subdue this mind are liberated from the bonds of mara. So mara bandhana, bonds of mara. One can uh, get rid of them. Mokhanti means can be liberated. Um, the one who subdues the mind. Sanya mesati means to subdue. So the mind is durangamang. It can really go far, far distances. If you went to the moon yesterday, uh, right now, right here, you can go to the moon in a fraction of a second uh, with the power of the mind. And the mind, it is said, ekacharan. Um, so without form, asariran, uh, without form. And uh, also guhasayan, um, it, it needs uh, to associate a cave. So like the Vahadayavattu, the, we say, um, it resides, uh, resides in the, in the heart. Um, so dwelling in the heart, the mind without form wanders far and alone. When you have a form, maybe um, your journey can be a little um, heavier. So when you don't have a form, you can really go much faster. Um, those who subdue this mind, ye chittan sanya mesanti mokhanti mara bandhana, so he or she can be liberated from the bonds of mara. The mind residing in the metaphorical cave of the heart is formless and capable of wandering far and wide. Despite its intangible nature, it has a significant impact on our lives. Those who master their minds, bringing them under control, are freed from the bonds of Mara, the ties of ignorance, attachment, and suffering. These are the, the bonds of Mara. Again, this, this verse emphasizes the importance of 
inner work and self mastery as the path to liberation by turning inward and understanding the workings of our minds we can bring free we can break free from the cycles of suffering and attain spiritual freedom so eventually we can break free that um sansaric circle we can decode that sansaric misery and come out of that suffering and finally attain the spiritual freedom uh, there's another a background story to this over here an uncle and nephew were leading a holy life they became monks they were living like monks one day uh, the nephew received two pieces of cloth and he presented one of the clothes to his uncle but the uncle did not want to accept it he declined it and then uh, this nephew was displeased he was not happy and then he was thinking my uncle did not accept it and i am very upset and he didn't care for me and then um, uh, he decided to uh, leave the robe and he wanted to disrobe so while fanning his uncle he was thinking <laughs> this is a very interesting uh, mental projection that he was having he thought that he would sell one piece of cloth and buy a she goat and earn some money now everything while uh, fanning the uncle he was thinking eventually he would get married and would have a son <laughs> now uh, in his mind he also think then he would pay a visit to his uncle with his wife and uh, this wife somehow uh, kills his uh, uh, child and then uh, uh, he would be very angry and he would start to beat his wife he was really dreaming like that and then suddenly he struck his own uncle with the fan <laughs> thinking that he is actually uh, beating his wife now the the uncle read his thoughts and uh, brought him to his senses um, uncle was already in arahantama and the nephew felt very ashamed and he dropped the fan and ran away you know the, the there were a lot of young monks samaner monks and they seized him somehow he caught he caught, they caught him and brought him to the buddha and then the buddha described the fleeting nature of the mind see the mind can be very fragile it has this uh, fleeting nature dwelling in the cave of the heart the mind without form wanders far and alone just like that samanera he was already while fan in the uncle he was already married and getting even having children so many things had uh, happened to him uh, the mind's nature very interesting story uh, the other uh, stanza number 6 anavatthita chittas sadhammang avijanato pariplava pasadas panyana paripurati wisdom never becomes perfect in one in one whose mind is not steadfast who knows not the good teaching and whose faith wavers and if you don't have a steadfast mind if you have a strong mind and if you don't have good teaching if you don't know the good teaching if you don't know the dhamma and if you don't have faith Uh, if your faith is wavering, then um, you cannot really uh, have um, wisdom. Your wisdom will never be perfect. So the step, uh, steadfast mind, uh, one that is focused and unwavering, is essential for the cultivation of wisdom. Without a stable mind, it is challenging to grasp and embody. the teachings of the buddha faith or sadha in this context refers to confidence in the buddha dhamma sangha the commitment uh, to path and practice a mind that is distracted and wavering cannot 
fully absorb or apply the wisdom of the teaching. Therefore, cultivating a stable, focused mind and a deep understanding of the Dhamma is crucial for the spiritual growth. Okay. The other uh, stanza, stanza number seven, also little related to that, uh, but uh, again a little different too. Anavasuta chittas ananvahata chetaso punya papa pahinas natri jagarato bhayan. Jagarato means the one who is awake. Bhaya is fear. Uh, so punya papa pahinas, the one who has abandoned punya and papa, both merits and uh, demerits. Uh, for such people, there is no fear. There is no fear for an awakened one, uh, anavasuta chittas, uh, whose mind is not uh, sodden by lust. And ananvahata chittas, so not afflicted by hate. And one who has gone beyond both merit and demerit. For such a person, there will be no bhaya, no fear. Again, this is very interesting. Sometimes we we can check ourselves. A um, lot of people, like mundane people, average people, they are very scared of things. Like you get scared of uh, um, like a roach or insects or even uh, maybe lightning, thunder. And sometimes you hear sudden noise, you get scared. And you need to think, wow, I am so far away from Nibbana. <laughs> so um, you really have to be strong. Um, sometimes you get like jerk or something when you suddenly hear someone coming or suddenly if someone silently comes and shows up and then you get scared too. Like those little things also um, can be a good example for us. Wow, we have to really do a lot of things to steady our mind, uh, to straighten our mind. Uh, we still have so much, um, so much, so much uh, defilement. When an unawakened one, individual, one who has attained enlightenment, uh, is free from fear because their mind is not clouded by lust or hatred. That is the idea. That is the idea here. You don't have lust. You don't have hatred, and such a mind is not scared. Even if you are going to die, um, you don't get scared. Such a person has transcended the dualities of merit and demerit, living in a state of equanimity and balance. This was illustrates the, the ultimate goal of spiritual practice, a mind that is pure, free from attachment and aversion, and beyond the cycle of karmic consequences. By striving for this state, we can cultivate a fearless and serene mind. Okay, there is another story over here. Uh, I'll also explain this story in brief. There was a farmer. Uh, this farmer wanted to become a monk again because he thought the, the monk life is so easy, <laughs> uh, so comfortable, and then um, he became a monk and then after a while um, he wanted to come back. He was thinking of his family and this robe in, discarded the robe and came back. So many a times it happened. When he go back to home and then he felt, okay, this is too much work and I had to do a lot of things. And uh, again, he was not feeling comfortable and he went back to the, the temple. He became a monk. So this um, happened many a times to him, multiple times. Six times it is said, um, he discarded the robe. <laughs> and uh, once he saw his uh, pregnant wife in disarray, and that time he felt uh, disgusted, uh, disgusted of worldly life. And then he thought, okay, I'm going to, this time I'm going to um, become a monk again. I don't want to uh, stay in this lay life anymore. So on the way to the monastery, he meditated. And it is said uh, he was very 
um, very conscious and very this time he was very serious actually even while walking he was meditating and then he became a stream enter a sotapan and he entered the unwilling monks again and uh, he asked them he asked them to uh, those monks uh, please reordain me <laughs> and because naturally the monks were um, aware like this this guy will come again and he will go back uh, again after a while and they they were not really willing to ordain him and somehow he pleaded them to reordain and they did it and this time the man he received his ordination and before long he attained arahantship and then when the monks Uh, mentioned to the Buddha that he claimed to be an arahant, and then the Buddha explained his state of mind uh, before and after his realization of nibbana. Yeah, this is again very interesting how um, the mind um, can waver, and uh, also finally when you go beyond merit and demerit. um you can finally get rid of all kinds of fear uh the next stanza is number 8 kumbhu upamang khaya mimang viditwa nagarupamang chitta midang thapetwa yo detha marang phanya ayudhena jitang charakhe anivesano sia so kumbh is here um a, a clay pot okay kaya is body and nagara is city chitta is mind yodheta means you fight mara is the evil one panya yudena uh, by the weapon of wisdom panya ayudha ayudha means the weapon so panya ayudha means by the weapon of wisdom and jitanche rakhe anivesano sia then you can um uh, conquest and then remain unattached so the the meaning here realizing that this body is as fragile as a clay pot kumbhupamang as fragile as a um, clay pot and fortifying this mind like a well fortified city so the mind at the beginning is like a kumbha or the clay pot and then you need to make sure that it is fortified like a well uh, guarded well protected city uh, nagarupama then uh, yodetha maram fight out mara with the sword of wisdom panyayudhen then guarding the conquest remain unattached this was uh, reminds this was reminds us of the impermanence and fragility uh, of the mind comparing it to a clay pot that can easily be broken in contrast the mind should be fortified like a well defended city the sword of wisdom symbolizes the inside that cuts through delusion and ignorance by using wisdom to overcome the forces of mara we achieve a significant victory however we must remain vigilant and unattached continuously guarding our mind to maintain this state of liberation so uh, there is another story here um, like um, many monks when they were meditating in the forest they were troubled by the tree tree gods tree deities and because they were not planning to leave and the three de- deities were little concerned and they created some unpleasant noises and sights and that were really making the monks uh, not comfortable they were not able to uh, practice meditation and they when they sought the advice of the buddha uh, the buddha asked them go back uh, to that place again when you have a problem don't run away you face it you encounter it find a better solution and uh, advise uh, them to go there and extend loving kindness 
uh, towards them all. And they did so while entering the, the forest. And the result that uh, the, those very deities later proved very helpful to them. They were all taking care of these monks. And later they, these monks were able to uh, compare the body to a vessel and the monks developed insight, um, Vipassana. And the Buddha wrote, uh, read their thoughts and uh, this time Buddha uh, projecting himself before them, magically appeared before them and confirmed what they thought. And uh, yeah, so Buddha helped them uh, to attain Arahantahood uh, this time as well uh, in the, the forest. Again, this is an interesting um, story because uh, Buddha, when he gave, uh, instructs the monks to practice meditation, even if they go far away uh, from the from the Jetavana monastery or, or wherever the Buddha is, and he could uh, still monitor them, how they do it. And he was very careful. He was also, as a very true spiritual master, he was um, looking after them, caring for them, and their spiritual well-being. So this time he helped them again uh, to make sure that they attain Arahantahod. And sometimes when the monks were also not feeling well, the Buddha used to go, them, uh, go there and uh, help them. For example, when Venerable Mahakasapa, Venerable Moggallana, when they were sick, um, after having uh, gone to the meditation, uh, Samadhi, uh, Jhana, it is said the Buddha uh, went to them and uh, freed the Satta, Bhajanga, seven factors of enlightenment, and they recovered from their sickness. So uh, this is a really beautiful example of Buddha's exemplary leadership as a spiritual master. Okay, uh, again the uh, number nine, achirang vatayang kayo pataving adhisesati chuddo apeta vinyano nirathang kalingarang. Before long, uh, this body will lie upon the earth, unheeded and lifeless like a useless lug. So achirang means before long. Uh, ayankayo, this body. Patavi is the earth. Adhisesati means we lay down. Chuddo apeta vinyano, uh, when the vinyana or the consciousness is um, separated. Nirathang kalingarang, just like a useless, um, useless log. So the body, whatever we do with our panchakanda, five aggregates, this skeleton will work as long as there, uh, there is the consciousness. If there is no consciousness, um, the body cannot survive as well. So this were, uh, this was this stanza serves as a sobering reminder of the inevitability of death. Our bodies, no matter how strong or healthy, uh, will one day become lifeless and forgotten. This impermanence should encourage us to focus on what truly matters, the cultivation of virtuous and wise mind. By prioritizing our spiritual development over the temporary concerns of the body, we align ourselves with the path of lasting peace and happiness. Okay, last two stanza, and we will be done for today. Number 10. Diso disang yantang kaira veri va pana veri nang micha panihitang chittang papio nang tato kare. Whatever harm an enemy do may do to an enemy or a hater to a hater, an ill directed mind inflicts on oneself a greater harm. So the last two stanzas have um, almost similar uh, meanings but little different. So diso disang yantang kaira. Uh, even uh, an enemy, enemy cannot do such a harm. Veriva um, panaverinam. 
मिच्छा पानी ही तं चित्तं पापियो नंतो करे um, an enemy or a hater can do such a harm more than the ill-directed mind can inflict upon oneself. Uh, the, the damage that can be incurred by an ill-directed man mind can be so colossal. So we really uh, have to think of the mind and we really have to um, take care of the mind, guard the mind uh, very carefully. The harm we inflict upon ourselves with an ill-directed mind is far greater than any harm that can be done to us by external enemies. Negative thoughts, negative desires, negative emotion can cause so much deep and lasting suffering um, if left unchecked. So we have to be uh, very mindful. We have to check all the time. We have to guard the mind all the time. This stanza underscores the importance of directing our mind towards wholesome, positive state and avoiding the destructive tender tendencies that arise from ignorance and delusion. So over here, there is uh, again another story. Uh, there was a wealthy herdsman. Uh, he actually entertained the Buddha. He was attending to the Buddha. And one day um, the Buddha uh, departed um, and then he also accompanied uh, the Buddha to some distance. And after a while he came back. And as he was returning, he was accidentally killed by a stray arrow. Uh, we have heard uh, several stories where uh, stray uh, cows have killed some people. And over here, uh, he was accidentally killed by a stray arrow. So the monks um, were talking about this. The, those Putujana monks, they also were thinking, oh, the Buddha, if he did not visit there, um, the man would not have met uh, such a fatal accident. And then the Buddha said, um, under no circumstances would he have escaped his death owing to a past evil karma. And added that uh, the internal ill-directed mind would become very inimical to oneself. So sometimes the, the, the powerful force of the karma um, can be so strong and um, even um, no matter how much you try, you won't be able to get rid of um, that impact of the karma. So karma is not everything, but karma can be really a powerful force to reckon with. We need to think of it. When we do good things and bad things, the result will come to us uh, in some form or the other. If not in this birth, throughout our samsara also it can happen. Sometime in life when we have such strong impact, some negative negativity. Sometimes we get sick, sometimes we um, meet accidents and they are not necessarily accidental. They could be definitely the result of our own karma in the past. So the mind directed towards the, the ten uh, kinds of evil are the killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, slandering, harsh speech, uh, vain talk, covetousness, ill will and false belief. These are the ten non-wholesome deeds. So the last answer, natang mata pita kaira anye va pichanyataka samma panihitang chittang seye sonang tato kare. Now, uh, just as the other stanza, neither the mother nor the father nor any other relative can do one greater good than one's own well-directed mind. So the, the other stanza was, previous stanza was Micha Panihitang, ill-directed mind. This one is Samma Panihitang Chitta, a well-directed mind. When the mind is well-directed, not even the mother or father or any other best of the best relative can do so much greater good to you. 
So this final verse highlights the unparalleled value of a well-directed mind. No external influence, not even the love and care of close relatives can benefit us from such, from as much as our own our disciplined and virtuous mind. So by taking responsibility for our own mental states and actions, we empower ourselves to lead a life of wisdom and compassion, creating the conditions for true happiness and liberation. Um, so um, that is the mind directed towards the uh, the ten kinds of meritorious deeds again, uh, like the ildi, uh, um, the the previous one was uh, ten kinds of evil. This is about the ten kinds of uh, wholesome deeds, meritorious deeds, generosity, morality, meditation, reverence, service, transferring of merit, rejoicing in others' merit, hearing the doctrine, expounding the doctrine. Straighten, straightening one's uh, right wheels. Um, so these are the good deeds that we should cultivate all the time. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, the Chitta Vagga from the Dhammapada provides us with profound teachings of on the nature of the mind and the importance of mental discipline. By reflecting on and applying these teachings, we can cultivate a mind that is calm, focused, and aligned with the Dhamma, leading us towards the ultimate goal of liberation from suffering. Let us take these words to heart, continuously striving to understand and master our mind for our own benefit and the benefit of all beings. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So hello to everybody joining. We have Pante Maria, Lydia, Karuna, Meredith, Bhumika, maybe a name in Burmese, <laughs> Sud, Jayanta, Gita. And um, Bhante, we have a question from Hima. Is a stanza the same as a poem? Um, yeah, kind of, because... Um, in, in Buddhist literature, we have um, both uh, uh, stanzas, uh, Pali stanzas, like poetical uh, stanzas, where you can actually see um, these things are easier to remember, learn by heart. So that's a very, uh, very nice way to, um, you know, we, we can see a lot of uh, suttas with the stanzas. And sometimes we we also see many many suttas in uh, prose uh, form, but also we can see some uh, in verse form. So we can see in the Tipitaka both verse and form. Especially when it comes to verse, it's easier to remember, and you don't forget you every line, every letter, um, because they were bhanakas, they were learning by heart, and it was easier for them to. Uh, remember them. That was the idea. And another question from Hima. Uh, chitta means mind or heart? Uh, chitta. Well, um, um, you see, like in some cases, when you talk about uh, the mind, mana, you know, mana, chitta, um, even manasa, uh, for example, in Karani uh, Metta Sutta, Manasam Bhavaya Parimana, that Manasa is Metta. Uh, but also it is related to heart and the mind. Yeah, Mana, Chitta, uh, they are all um, pretty much the same. 
Thank you. And Vivian says, thank you, Bante. And Lydia asks, can you repeat the 10 virtuous deeds again, please? Oh, the 10 virtuous deeds, yes. 10 virtuous deeds are um, like um, generosity, dana, uh, seal, morality, and bhavana, meditation, and then uh, reverence, like um, you're respecting, service, patti uh, pattanu modana, like transferring merit, and then uh, uh, rejoicing in others' merit, and then um, listening to Dhamma, and also teaching the Dhamma. This also is a, we both do, uh, both ways, like you hear and I uh, teach, both of us are doing a wonderful meritorious act. And then straightening one's right view, because right view is um, um, one of the most important um, factor that we need to go along the right path, um, practice the Noble Eightfold Path. Okay. And Mary says, good evening, Bhante. And John says, I hope you are doing well, Bhante. How are things at the monastery? <laughs> Everything is good. Everything is good. I enjoy. And yeah, always very peaceful, happy. <laughs> And to be here with uh, wonderful monastery, monastics and also um, wonderful people here. Always happy to be here. <laughs> okay. And Hima asks, do all poems in Sutta come with melodies originally? I think when it comes to the these poems, they have different uh, chandas and alankara they call. Like I remember when I was learning Pali in Sanskrit, we also had to learn Uttodaya and Uttar Ratnakare and then Subodha Lankara, they were uh, talking about the rhyming schemes, you know, these were, these were also um, very famous uh, poems, yeah. And there were certain uh, techniques that you need to follow, you need to learn this art of um, when it comes to chanting, I think that the melody, you know, it depends on how you, how personally you feel better. Like uh, it's like a rhythm, and then also it can be a healing. Like when we chant, people feel also be, uh, feel more comfortable. And I also have actually recorded the entire Dhamma Pada chanting uh, in our channel Dhamma Dhamma USA. You can take a look. Okay, and Sud asks, Dear Bhante, to develop the mind, when should one look at the three characteristics? Is it wise uh, to look at this from the very beginning of practice, or should one focus more on doing things like generosity, etc., first? I think um, if you can do it from the very beginning, the vipassana way, that's fine. It depends on person to person. There are people who have already practiced in the Sankara. They already are used to it. And so for them, they can go straight to the, the Vipassana way. But some people, they need the Samatha way. They, it, they, maybe they need a little bit more, uh, more help. So in order to understand the power of this Dharma, maybe they need to practice Dana, Sila, Bhavana, uh, like... Uh, the, the other like um, supporting uh, things but eventually what is more important is the the vipassana uh, vipassana practice is um, the most powerful thing so you can always think of um, that as a really powerful way like when you lose someone when you get yourself sick or when you have ups and downs in your business or in your life uh, you you need to know like Okay, the, this is the three characteristics. Uh, when something bad happens to you, um, you, you need to see the three characteristics. Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta. Impermanent. Everything is subject to change. And suffering. When there is change, you don't like it. You're not happy. And then, um, whenever these things are there, you have no controlling um, body 
Um, so there is no permanent entity yeah you can really have that controlling power um, yeah think of it all the time actually in day to day life uh, it will be very helpful thank you bante and hima has a question not so much about the dhammavada but does the monastery have ac it's pretty hot today <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we also have to have to. Yeah, I think we have like system, um, but we also don't want to go to the system right away. We also have to learn um, how our body also is adjusted sometimes. Um, but for now, I think we are okay. <laughs> Thank you once again. Yeah, we are all okay. We are doing well. And uh, so I appreciate uh, everyone for your wonderful care. And that's the last question online, Pante. All right. Mm -hmm. So with that, we conclude today's session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And may you all be well, happy, healthy. Sukhi be Gahayuko. Looking forward to seeing you with another Dharma session like this. Good night. <laughs>